Hello, people on the internet watching vehicle reviews. Welcome to this. The 2024 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. It only took them 40 years to do it, but Jeep finally stuffed a V8 back into the Wrangler. So today I'm gonna get it up in the air. We're gonna nerd out in the tech specs, see what makes the V8 Wrangler different than the other models, and then go play with it in the dirt and give it some beans. There really is not much that differentiates this visually from any other model, ah, except for this. It is an active system with vacuum controlled valves on the outer tips. This has to impact the departure angle because it hangs down quite a bit. It's nice stainless steel mandrel bent piping, heavily insulated on the top. Note this, receiver, tow package, maximum rating of Outback, the 392 Rubicon utilizes a Dana 44 Generation 3 full floater solid rear axle with an all steel in construction heavy duty four link. It's got a true lock electronic rear locker with a 4.56 final drive ratio. The 392 gets its own unique Jeep branded mono tube dampers to help with the additional weight. It's insane how heavy duty the plate for the track bar mount is. And it does have a rear anti sway bar which measures in Measure, measure in at approximately 19 and some change millimeter diameter. Despite still having an aluminum body, the 392 is the heaviest of all the JL Jeep Wrangler variations, weighing in at 5,268 pounds, a thousand pounds heavier than a base model two door. Oh, it's unequal length, I think. And it's got an H pipe. No wonder this thing sounds so gnarly. <laughs> the transmission goes there's only one option with the v8 and that is the zf hhp 75 eight speed automatic it has a maximum torque input rating of 750 newton meters which is 553 pound feet bash bar to protect the transmission pan and a built-in hoop to protect that crossover exhaust pipe it is paired to the select track mp3022 two-speed auto transfer case manufactured by magna with a low range ratio of 2.72 to one. It only has four high and four low and four auto though. There is no option for too high to do glorious Jeep burnouts. Protected by a steel H-brace skid plate. It's not as shoehorned as I thought it would be in here. It's like this thing was made for a V8. This is awesome. Up front, you have another Dana 44 Generation 3 solid axle with a true lock front locker, electronically controllable inside. Again, those Jeep branded mono tube dampers. Interesting enough, they give you a Mopar branded steering stabilizer, unlike the Bielstein one you got on the 4xe Rubicon. The front anti-sway bar, which is electronically disconnectable, measures in at, what well, big. 32 and change millimeter in diameter. Someone might have actually thought about this. Looks like the oil filter drain is positioned so it'll drop just between these bars without hitting them. There, there might have been a mild bit of sarcasm there. Time for the braking test. No one behind me, this is gonna suck. <laughs> Ready? Oh man. Huh. Whoa. 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 <laughs> it was almost like I didn't have an ABS for a second. It was like sideways for a bit. That was awesome. I want to do it again. That braking was just made possible thanks to a set of two piston floating calipers with a 330 millimeter or 12.9 inch front rotor. The wheel for the 392 package, it is a 17 by eight with a positive 12 millimeter offset, beadlock capable alloy that's finished in a uh, metallic brown, bronze, brown, bronze, sure. That is color coordinated with the tow hook and the borders of all the font on the vehicle, including the little trail rated emblems. They're wrapped in a set of 315, 70, 17 inch or 35 inch BF Goodrich all-terrain TA KO2 tires. Jeep still didn't put a cap on the side of the fender flare though. Out back, things get substantially larger on the 392 and only the 392 and the 35 Extreme package you can get for the other Rubicon models. You get a two piston rear caliper with a 350 millimeter or 14 inch rear rotor with the same size wheel and tire as you get up front, obviously. 
That's a Jeep. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. Full steering assessment. Pretty good, actually. The seats in the 392 edition are red leather and has Rubicon 392 embroidered in it. They're heated and full power adjustable as well as the steering wheel is heated. And oddly enough, the interior matches perfectly the little plate around the front and rear diff lock switch. Oh, weird. There's a little Jeep and a Gladiator in the dash over here on the left. I didn't even, I just noticed that because I was looking for buttons to press. I can slap this thing over into manual mode. I have some paddles in the back of the steering wheel. Oh, it's plastic. I thought it was metal for a sec. And if you don't shift, it will bounce off rev limiter and make you fly into the dashboard. So I like that, that it doesn't automatically shift for you. That shall always remain on. Check to control off, but I'm gonna leave it in drive because it's probably quicker. And I'll see what this thing can do. Four wheel drive launch. Ready? Go. Okay. Hell yeah. <laughs> It tried burning all four tires. That's, well that's good if <laughs> this thing's fucking sweet. It gets out of the hole hard. The fender flares have fender flares. That's how you know you've made it in the world. That is the only thing that gives away that this has a V8 is just right here on the side of the hood scoop. Oh, this hood is super heavy. This is insane. Oh, hi, because water, it channel, it guides the water out. Oh, okay. It's essentially a ram air system. The air comes through the ducting right here from the hood scoop down into the bottom of the air box before going into the engine. It has an additional little flapper to drain water out. Underneath the head of the 2024 Jeep Wrangler 392 is a 392, which is the Apache 6.4 liter iron block aluminum head pushrod V8 that produces 475 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 470 pound feet of torque at 4,300 RPM. Digging in a little bit deeper on this Apache 392 as a forged steel crankshaft, hypereutectic aluminum pistons with cross bolted mains. It has a 103.9 by 94.6 millimeter bore stroke with a 10.9 to one compression ratio. It does have MDS, multi-displacement system, so it can kick down onto four cylinders to conserve on fuel. And speaking of fuel, this has multi-port fuel injection only, no direct injection, so you don't have to worry about the back of your valves getting dirty from carbon deposits. This does have a variable intake runner at 4,800 RPM. It'll switch from a long runner to a short runner or vice versa. This hood is so heavy. No wonder it weighs a thousand pounds more. Since I've already reviewed a 2024 Wrangler Rubicon 4xe, we already know its off-road capabilities based upon that. But what you want to know is how ignorant can you possibly be off-road with a loud screaming V8? Because that's what I want to do in one of these things. Select Off-Road Plus, which automatically defeats traction control. Ready? Go! <laughs> oh, it gets sideways! taste dirt it's getting inside here somehow about that hill climb that i usually do transverse mounted all-wheel drive configurations and unibody based suvs and crossovers I'm about to fuck that up we're not gonna do anything I'm just gonna leave it for auto not locking any diffs no i don't need to disconnect the sway bar we're just gonna eat ready go <laughs> For all the reviews you watched of vehicles that struggle up that, the power and beauty of something like this. 
case you don't want to use your feet, it also has hill descent control, which you must be in four low to use. I like that the tire pressure gauge actually shows a little Jeep on it. There's all kinds of other gauges you can cycle through to monitor just important details and sitch about the engine. There's also some off-road telemetry inside the gauge cluster itself. It's worth mentioning this isn't the type of vehicle you want to do a lot of high speed hammering into big bumps like this. Oh, this is awesome! Because it's front rear solid axle. That's not what this thing's intended purpose is. This is more of a rock crawler. This in contrast to a Bronco Raptor in anything high speed, it's not even gonna be close just because just shapes. Typically I use the gravel pit to test the vehicle's all wheel drive or four wheel drive system to see how it can get out of a deep sand, snow rock situation. But in this situation, I'm gonna see if I can send pebbles into outer orbit. I'm gonna defeat my traction control again and uh, disconnect my sway bar because that makes no sense whatsoever for what I'm about to do other than I wanna disconnect it so I can say I, I at least used it once. Engage. because the biggest pain with one of these hard tops is having to take it off. But this takes the pain out of it. It's got the little dongle up here for the satellite radio. Well, it's a quail. It's super expensive, but then again, if you're the type of person that's willing to spend nearly a hundred grand on a Wrangler, that's probably a drop in the something. Uh, I don't know if I'd want my sound bar filling up with water. That doesn't look fun. Is it one touch auto close? Well, that's nice. Closes moderately quick. What is this for? Wow, that's a big, this is a big Alpine subwoofer. That's huge. What is that like a 12, 10? Like a 10? There's a winch cable. They give you a pair of, a pair of gloves. And a nice looking toe strap. Huh, a little storage compartment. Bag for your top. I don't understand it. There's a little bulldog that says Louie and another dog that says Ralph. I love Easter eggs. No way, even this is done in bronze. Okay, that's attention to detail. The black canvas looks nice from the inside. What exactly should the interior of a nearly $100,000 Wrangler look like? Like, what is the standard for that? It's nice in here, but I don't know what you should expect. What is this? Oh, <gasps> Oh, that is so awesome. It's nerve wracking. I don't want it to just like fall. Well, I guess it can't. Oh, yeah, it can't really fall. That is so neat. And then when the top is down, that makes even more of a unique parachute experience for this back glass. Ton of USB ports in the rear seat, also an AC power inverter. They actually engraved a baby into the rear sheet metal of the door. Oh, rawr. That huge Alpine subwoofer out back translates to a fairly decent sound system in here. Armrest has got some red stitching on it and then so... What is this? Is that a pen? Oh, it's a tool kit! So you can take your top off. That looks like a lot of work. Rip it e-brake. Floor mats can be confusing. Be sure you read about them. I want to try out this so I'm gonna go to trail recordings, front cam, clean gap, what? Did it squirt my camera lens? It does! It squirts your camera lens clean. Guess I gotta go dry it. Okay, let's record a trail. Oh, it's, it's gonna make a trail. This is neat. I mean, this is the kind of stuff you should expect if you're paying 90 plus thousand dollars for this, other than just a V8. I want some other neat stuff too. Plot my little trail. Oh, it actually plots a shape. It's making a little dotted outline of my trail. Okay, I'm making, oh. You could make obscene shapes. Oh good, I'll erase your trail. No, I won't erase your trail. 
gonna look like a three-year-old drew it. It's really hard drawing with a vehicle. There, I made the shape of a bird. That's his foot, his tail, and some of those feathers in the back of its head. It's a bird. It's a bird standing on that twig. I don't want to save it because if, if this makes a permanent trail, someone's going to come out here and be super disappointed. Thankfully, I was born in the 80s and I'm old enough to remember seeing CJ5 and CJ7s with the AMC V8 still driving around the road. I haven't seen one in a very long time. But I always remember that it was so cool to hear the sound of a V8 coming out of a Jeep. And that is the appeal of this thing. The price is absolutely astronomical, but you don't buy one of these because it's sensible. You buy one of these to be insensible. I don't know if that's actually a word. Unsensible, not insensical. I'm nonsensical. The fuel economy is terrible. I've been averaging 10.8. Granted, I'm filming a car view. But this has by far been the most smiles per gallon I have had off-road with the exception of maybe the Raptors or the T-Rexes. It's just perfect having a V8 in one of these things. And it's now time to give this thing some scores. Starting with the bean score, the assessment to the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the 392 Wrangler gets a rating of... Followed by the cookie score, the assessment of value and this thing as equipped at $95,000 gets a rating of... Next is the wrench score, the assessment to bees of maintenance, and this thing gets a rating of... Next is the meatball score, the assessment of vehicles off-road capabilities at Hamburger, and this 24 Wrangler 392 gets a rating of... Lastly is the penguin score, the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle, and by shoving a V8 to a Wrangler, it earns a rating of... Should always game like that. Chef kiss. Bye.